Today I'm going to explain a penetrations plan. I've had a few people ask me what this is, how it works. Another term for that would be a set out plan. So this is created as a layer combination in the lower ground floor story. And the way that I would generally start this is to overlay or trace the saved view of the floor plan. So this gives us a clear indication of what's happening. And that, let's just go through all the pieces. So we can see here that we've got a dark grayed area over the bathroom uh, and a few circles. These are representing the wastes. Uh, this is just indicative. I, uh, well, this isn't real. Um, so it's just looking about how to set it up, not the exact numbers of these. So don't get too concerned about that. Um, this is the slab. This is the ground floor slab. We see that this one is at zero, zero to story, so that's pretty common. And for the bathroom, for the structural floor of the bathroom, oh, one more thing. So this one will be set at 150, like 120. This one here will also be 120, but we're setting that one down minus 50. So we're recessing the bathroom, so that way the tile screed will end up matching with the surface level of the main floor, most importantly, at the doorway. The other area that we need to look at in terms of heights is the beam. And so this is our drop edge beam around the outside edge. In this instance, we're looking at a, a Bondex slab. And so the Bondex slab and the foam outside and the 10 mil inside for um, render or plasterboard is also is also set down and that's just to give a little bit of tolerance and that can then be grout filled or something after we don't want to leave it too tight because we're having the main slab set down onto the footing uh, and not sitting on top in this instance sometimes it's done differently so what else do we need to have in order to create the penetrations plan we need to understand what these definitions, what these dimensions represent. So in this case we're using a grid. I haven't set out this grid properly yet in terms of its numbers and letters. Generally what I'll do is just drag copies of these grids and then change the letters. Again, this isn't the official way. I find this just as easy so I prefer just to set everything out and then make adjustments because it very much might happen that I end up going in and making a change, needing to add a grid or move a grid or change a grid. So I don't want to be too worried about that. And then alphanumeric. And so on, I'll leave that for now. Uh, we're just focusing on a small portion of this just to keep the video simple. Now the slab here, we're using a level dimension tool to set out the height of this and a level dimension tool to set out the height for this. These are automatic text that allows us to update things as necessary. And we're just using a, a cover fill, cover fill 25%, which allows us to still be able to see through for the trace reference. Uh, but also to be able to, when it's turned off, be able to articulate the different levels. So the set down drop edge, the main slab, and the set down area for the bathroom. So this is what we could call a penetrations plan in that it's looking at the floor penetrations, in this case for uh, sanitary wastes and floor wastes. Uh, but we could also call it a set out plan. So who's looking at it? That's the most important thing. Uh, this needs to be understood and used by the plumber, by the concreter, and whoever's setting out, maybe that's a formwork maker, or uh, that might be the concreter anyway. So they need to understand what, where all these dimensions are. So this plan is particularly for them, and in terms of the contractor, it's explaining the relationship of the grid, which will then also relate to every other level as well. And so this grid runs all the way through, and that helps to tie both stories together, as well as a common floor plan, a, a general arrangement floor plan, and a more specific plan like this, penetrations or setup plan, and then of course we'll have other things like reflected ceiling plans, electrical lighting plans, which are all just showing different amounts of information based on the same 
space. So hopefully that's helpful and uh, you're able to implement this into your project. Once it's saved as a save view, of course, then we can place it on our layout just as before with anything else.